the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, has announced that taking effect from April 1 April 2020, it will be implementing reviewed electricity tariffs in line with its multi-year tariff order, MYTO, which reflects increases that were supposed to have been implemented between 2016 and 2018, but were not. The recently concluded upward review of energy tariffs under MYTO2 has proved necessary due to the illiquidity issues plaguing the Nigerian power sector. However, as NEC reviews energy tariffs for retail, it must consider and address the effects of deleterious policies in the business of meter assets providers who play a key role in Nigeria's power decentralization policy and agenda. NEC, as an agency of federal government and a regulator protecting consumers' interests, should engage with the Ministry of Finance concerning a, a reconsideration of the increased import tariff policy and its implementation. And joining us in the studio to talk about this this morning, it's Sunday Od Odotun, electricity expert. Thank you for joining us. And also, legal practitioner, Liberos Oshoma. Thank you for joining us this morning. My pleasure. Now, just last week, it was said that um, the Minister of Power was quoted as saying that he had written a recommendation to FEC to, to repossess discos if they don't sit up and perform. Now, others even quoted him as saying that the federal government wants to take over the discos and hand it over to Siemens. What, what is your reaction to this? I'll, I'll start with you, Liboros. Um, I, I, I think um, we are truly not serious in this country. When this government first came on board, um, some people had argued that um, the way the discos were privatized and that there was need for the government to look you know, into the privatization process again, um, also check their capacity, that it was actually you know, stage manage and so to cronies. But the government said no, that um, if every government comes on board and had to look into privatization of um, the past sector, and that that would not also repose confidence in investors, and so they were going to leave, yes. you know, things at the way. I also expected that at that time, there should be close monitoring, um, uh, apart from um, just um, leaving them as they were, there should be close monitoring on um, on part generation and part distribution but from what we see you know it's it's almost like a motion without movement uh, you know government will tell you they have a projection to generate and then over time you hear that oh they generate so much or that they have the capacity to, to generate. generate that's the evacuation that is the problem um we are not and then now we're talking about tariffs uh, because consistently you hear the disco talk about um, the fact that um, in Nigeria, Nigeria is um, we have the lowest, you know, um, uh, uh, costs for uh, uh, energy tariff. Uh, and, 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 and I begin to ask the question: We all talk about cost for energy tariff. We talk about um, um, the cost of investment, but nobody is really bothered about the consumer here. And nobody seems to be worried about, you know, what's, how does the consumer benefit in all of this? We'll be talking about metering, metering, metering all of these years. And the government will tell you, though, they have given instruction that, you know, the discos must meter, you know, every consumer. And the discos will tell you that um, there are not enough meters, you know, to go around, and, but that they are trying their best. And now it is so bad that the discos, the, the, the federal government has said, you know what, we need to, if you, if you don't sit up, who need to maybe repossess. Yes. And then all of a sudden, the discos went to Abuja in a roundtable meeting, and the next thing we'll start hearing of, oh, yes, we need to increase tariff to be able to... You, you know, it's, 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 so that's why I said it's almost as if we are not serious. Until we sit down to address the root cause of this problem, then we'll just be going around in, in circles. Uh, Mr. Sonny, how do you want to react to this development, please? Well, thank you very much. Yes. I think what we need to do, <clears throat> when you are talking about electricity, it is beyond activism. It is beyond sentiment. The first thing is that the government that, in their own wisdom, choose to privatize this sector, the industry, I think mistakes were made from the, first, the very first day. And what do I mean? One, they committed to doing certain things, which, and they asked the incoming investors to also do certain things. In the case of the discourse, um, the discos investors paid a cash sum of $1.4 billion. Where is the money today? You can ask the government. And if you look at other countries where such privatization took place, it is not the way we dealt with the money we made here that it was done in other countries. That's number one. 
after that, they, they signed an agreement in which the discos were asked to, they gave the discos what was called the customer numbers, the whole country. Everything was um, about 2.7 million households. And you, are, you and I know, Ibadan alone was said to be the largest city in West Africa when I was young. And when you see a building, a block of four flats, with about four shops in front of it, that alone means eight customers, eight outlets or buildings with um, accounts. So it was after we came on board and doing, after doing um, our own checks, admiration, we found out that we have more than 10 million households that needed meters. Okay, so they now gave the discos targets on metering, which is another thing that people are not saying. What we are required to do was only 1.7 million meters. In a country of <laughs> over 200, well, at least 180 million people. So the 1.7 million meters, which was 200,000 meters per annum per disco for five years. And that one, we have done. But it is not enough. How can you want to meet only 1.7 million people out of about 32 million households in the country? Yes. So after that, the same federal government then decided that metering is not a primary uh, duty of the discourse. Of the discourse. Yes. So they took it away from us. And then they gave it to external third party contractors and uh, meter installers and meter manufacturers. We believe that with that, then we should flood this country with quality standard meters such that everybody will be metered. But what is happening now, the situation is even worse. And it is worse not because those guys are not performing or they don't want to perform, the map providers. The problem is that the same government, the same policy, the same regulator, they handed this thing over to them are the one creating more problems for them. Number one, there's 45 percent um, import duty on meters. We feel that for these providers, they should even give them waivers so that they can bring in so many meters. Those who assemble here or those who manufacture here have to buy a lot of the components abroad. Now, with that kind of scenario, now there are no meters. And people out there are blaming the discos. People think, a lot of people still think that the discos are the ones in charge of metering. We are no more in charge of metering. We only work on that map. We work with map. And you will notice that when you want to apply for meter, you still go to our website to apply. That happened because the meter asset providers have to, their own infrastructure has to pick with their own ICT backend, a billing platform. That's why we work with them. When you pay into an escrow account, which we also see and have access to, that money is paid to them, nothing to do with us. I mean, so Mr. This Sonny, is, let me, let me, let me interject. Failed. Yes, let me, sorry, let me interject here. So if you're saying the discos are not to be blamed from this, we, we can't deny the fact that Nigeria still, we're still getting you know, crazy <laughs> estimated <laughs> billions. So what who, is, then, what is, who, then is, who then is hampering the, the, the effort of the government? Yeah, and yeah. Like, like I'm telling you this, yeah. no, the government is the one hampering their own effort. <laughs> you can't have bad policies and you expect the system to work. You cannot appoint people to go and bring in meters and install meters and you are the same person. You have capped the, the higher they can charge for the meters for them. But at the same time, you are now increasing their landing costs. I'm not speaking for them, but this is the reality that they face. You can invite them to come and tell you their stories. You can even ask the question, how many meter asset providers were nominated by NEC, the regulator. How come the only few of them are metering today? But, but so again, sorry, the MDC of TCN has been blaming the discourse for the woes of Nigeria. I mean, yeah, you, you see, how, how do we begin to react to this? My, yes, my, Mr. Shoma. My, my friend said that um, um, electricity is beyond activism. I, I disagree completely uh, because he, but he did admit yes that the problem started right from the beginning. Yes. And but rather, instead of admitting that they also contributed to the problems, he placed the problem at the doorstep of government. You're buying an asset. Yes. One expected that you do due diligence. 
you were given um, a figure that, okay, you have um, uh, 2.5 meters to provide. Yes. We all know that is a practical impossibility. I don't need to be a, a meter provider or a, 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 a one of the ele electricity regulator or a disco owner no. to know that that is a practical impossibility. But because they were so much in a hurry, you know, to take over this federal government asset because it was almost at a giveaway, they closed their eyes to all of those, you know, um, in inefficiency and ineptitude that were thrown at them because to them it was a big cash cow. And then they came on board. Even while they were installing meters, yes. how many of the meters did they install at that time? 1.7 million meters. When you said, at, after you had done your due diligence, meters. when you, when you after takeover, you did your due diligence and you discovered that you needed to install 10 million meters, you installed 1.7 million meters. Yes. For me, that is a woeful failure. Can I, can um, I let, let, me, let me finish. Yes. I allowed you. And that's a failure, woefully. And then, because they were benefiting massively from estimated billing, and, and so they would always push the buck to the government and then tell the consumers that, look, we, there's nothing we can do. Government had told us that it is, um, we need to install 1.7 per annum. And so we are following the government guideline uh, 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 systematically. But in the real sense, the major benefits that was behind, nobody was discussing about it. And then secondly, the other issue was the fact that after you took over these companies and you found out that it wasn't what you were told, how many of them, how many of them, after all of this, how, how many of them did say, okay, look, government, this is what we met on ground as yeah. distinct from what we expected. So how do we cushion? How do we, where is the meeting point? None. And then lastly, on this same issue, the federal government now saw the inefficiency in the meter distribution. That was why, just like the federal government is threatening also now that they were going to re reacquire the discos, that was why the federal government said, look, since you are inefficient in distributing meters, they worked out a plan. And after working out the plan, costs and, and the profit, because you know in Nigeria, we always want to maximize profit and minimize cost. After working out the plan, some of the, the, the uh, meter providers that were licensed to provide meters, some of them were man-no-man -man businesses. And that was why they, a lot of them couldn't come on board. Okay. And I will, I will yield the floor here, allow my, my, my friend here okay. to continue. Yeah, while, while you respond to that, the, the MVC of TCN also they said that the issues of generation and transmission have been fixed. You want to react to that quickly? Okay. Huh. Um, first, the Honorable Minister, before him, um, the TCADMD gave Nigerian figures of what is generated, transmitted, and distributed in Nigeria, totally inaccurate. Unfortunately, again, like I said, there are some things we should not, um, I think figures don't lie. Number one, it is not true that Nigeria currently generates 13,000 megawatts. If we do, if Nigeria does that, we won't be where we are. Um, there's a difference between installed capacity and actual generation. And installed capacity is just what we are capable of doing if all things are equal. Number one problem with Nigeria is that we don't have mix, different mix of energy. What we, the mixed what we have is mainly three, uh, three plants that depends on water, that is the hydro, shiro, jeba, and kanji. And those don't give us less than one quarter of what we call it to generate. All the other 25 plants actually rely on gas, and there's a major gas constraint. A lot of them has to do with where the plants are located. If you go to Ogun State, Olonjo Power Plant, that is in Papa Lanto. There's another one here in Egbe Tama Station. The Tama plant in Egbe is the largest in West Africa. They have never produced up to optimum. Why? Because of gas constraint. And that is the problem all over. Whereas we have the hottest spot in the country between Kano and Jigawa, why can't we do solar? How come we're not even doing all other kind of mix? So that's one of the problems. Problem of sufficiency, that's one. Number two, transmission. Um, the, you may, the Siemens report, I believe, is a public uh, document now. When Siemens were coming to Nigeria, showing interest in what they wanted to come and do, they did a report where they listed the capacity, the install capacity of each of the layers in the value chain. Okay, Mr. Sonny, you want to speed up with your generation? thoughts now? Yes, okay. please. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Just, just speed, okay. up, speed it up. Yes. So, generation, 
um, transmission, transmission and distribution. Yes. Transmission is known to be incapable of even doing of um, wheeling up to 5,000. The TCN themselves carried out a stress test in 2015, and they confirmed that the distribution can do 6,288 megahertz. 6,288. Never before has that been wheeled by transmission. Okay. So generation will generate. Transmission needs to wheel the power before you can distribute. And it, the, the, the CMN report also states very clearly that currently the install capacity of the discos goes up to 11,000 megawatts. That doesn't mean that they can distribute 11,000 megawatts. Again, we have a lot of inefficiency in the system. But let me quickly um, say something about what my brother said earlier on. Because like I said, there's no point in us misleading the public. I, as a person, I will just say it as it is. I'm not going to defend the disco blindly. For instance, when you talk about inefficiency, discos are number one. And I think what we all need to understand, number one, when we took over, there's nothing like government guideline. The meters that they ask us to supply has to do with how they computed the figure in the tariff. So if you spend more than they ask you to spend, you will not be able to recover the cost. So it is not about they just say you can just go mystery. No, they give you a figure of your capex. Once you spend a penny more than that, you can't get it back. That's how business operates. That's how the system works. And these are things you can also access and see for yourself. So it's not about, okay, government say this. They said you must not do more than this. Oh, Mr. Sonny, and that's what we The question did. is, when you acquire, when you acquire a business, yes. the first step is due diligence. Yes, that was done. So after you, do, you did your due diligence, yes. you discovered that what the government was telling you were different from what is on ground. Yes. At that point, yes. at that point, what did the disco do? No, what they did. But no, because what they so much in a hurry no. to acquire. What they did was so they, they closed down. their eyes. No, to no, no. Right, that's why they are complaining down. Mr. Sunday wanted to talk. Electricity expert and legal practitioner, liberal or showman, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. And this hour. Now, joining us this morning via phone is the Minister of State for Health, Senator Olorunimbe Mamora. Thank you for joining us, Minister. Yes, good morning. Good morning and good to have you with us this morning. Now, there's been an outbreak of um, coronavirus in Nigeria and Lagos in particular. Now, what would you want Nigerians to be aware of at this point in time? I think the first thing to say is that there shouldn't be any hysteria or panic. We don't need that. We need our people to have correct and accurate information. Now, having said this, Nigerians should not panic. And um, they should look out and continue to follow accurate and correct information that will be issued and communicated to the citizenry through official channels, television stations, uh, radio stations, press releases, and of course, the toll-free line of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. Now, having said that, since the outbreak of COVID-19, that is the uh, coronavirus disease in China, the National uh, Emergency Operation Center was, at, was uh, you know, activated so that Multisectoral meetings were held for preparedness and readiness for any outbreak in Nigeria. And since this first case has been confirmed, and an Italian from Milan, a businessman coming into the country a few days ago, and uh, took ill, well, not severely, moderately ill, and that uh, is tested and confirmed, he's been taken to isolation center. And uh, the key things to note that have been done is first detect, then isolate, which has been done, and of course, contact tracing, 
is what is ongoing right now. That is, trace all those that that incident case came in contact with. And of course, what the man is having now is what is, is uh, uh, quality clinical care. And in doing that, you also want to safeguard the health of the people in the, in the hospital. That is, you want to sure, you want to be sure that the, there is no hospital transmission. And finally, you want to prevent any transmission within the community. Oh, oh, Don't Senator, forget, yes. fortunately, being um, apprehended in Lagos, which has a robust preparedness uh, outfit, taking cue from what happened uh, in Ebola case. So, and they, they have an, the, 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 the governor is designated as the incident commander and is working with the Emergency Operations Center in Lagos and, of course, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. So, all measures, ministry measures, are being put in place to strengthen what is on ground and ensure that this uh, outbreak is contained. All right, Senator, if, 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 let me, let me, sorry, let me, let, me, let me interject here, if you, if you don't mind, for a moment. Um, now, this, this man was actually, um, he came into the country on the 25th, which was a Tuesday, and he yeah. wasn't detected until Thursday yesterday. Now, this might cast a little bit of doubt on, on the ability of, of the government to, to curtail this, as he wasn't discovered until two days after. How does this, how do you begin to repose confidence in the Nigerian people that we are able to, to safeguard them from, from the spread of this, of this epidemic? Well, uh, let, 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 me say, let, me, let me say this, um, which is for most people, don't forget what we call the case fatality ratio for coronavirus is still very low. It's just about, uh, so it's about three, three cases out of 100 that may succumb. That is very low compared to even Lassa fever. Lassa fever, you know, has a case with of between 15 to 17 percent. That is, if, if 100 uh, the, the patients are infected, then the, the, about 15 to 17 may die. So it's still low. So, and the, the, the point in that is that most people who contact or who are infected may not even uh, manifest any severe symptoms. The, we will have cases that are, that are asymptomatic, that is, they don't, they don't even manifest any symptoms. So there has to be high index of suspicion before uh, you can really, uh, uh, you know, zero, zero in on that patient and then do the needful. But having said that, the advisories and the information that we put out to people, when anybody comes from high risk area, then we expect some um, self isolation in the interest of that person and the immediate family and all people surrounding him or her. So that is important. Two, the uh, measures that we generally communicate to our people in terms of uh, taking uh, primary responsibility for your health. That is, if you feel sick, you know, contact or go to the hospital so that you can be properly examined and properly um, tested. Then it's also important that if you are manifesting any symptoms like uh, cough, sneezing, uh, fever, and all that, you also need to present early. So these are some of the things, and of course, the personal hygiene, respiratory hygiene, you know, wash your hands uh, and uh, use uh, the alcohol beads, uh, sanitizer, and of course, you know, keep away from uh, the crowd or keep some distance from people that, you, you know, you are likely to, to, to infect and all that. These are some of the measures which we continue to hammer on and very critical at times like this. All right. 
Senator Olori Nimbe Mamora, Minister of State for Health, thank you very much for joining us this morning on News on the Hour. Thank you very much. And that's our news roundup of events at this hour. For more news updates, please follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. We'll be back later with more stories making the headlines. Do join us. I am Benny Ark.